All right, mark the swelling and let's finish this up before we give Ortho another call. Charlie, speak of the devil. Hey, where's Maggie? Isn't she supposed to be in here? She went to get clotting factors from the third floor lab. Why? Jackson, I'm headed to the lab. Send a cone team after me. Dr. Harris, what's going on? Maggie. Pulse is ready, give her manitol. Let's go, let's go! Pupils are dilated. So now that we've actually seen the episode, obviously there was a lot more going on uh, that now you can maybe talk a little bit more about. So what can you tell us about some of the things that we've now seen from, from that episode? Obviously... Um, I know, when I read the episode, slash episodes, I was, I was really excited to have the great privilege of playing a ghost. <laughs> but um, but the, uh, the second half, Ten really picks up from a sort of cliffhanger of her mm. having um, had this brain hemorrhage. It sounds awfully dramatic <laughs> now that I'm talking about it. Uh, when I read the script before Ten, I was, like I said, honoured to have this... Uh, this bash at playing a ghost, which an honor has, which has been bestowed, I think, upon Michael, Erica, and Daniel. So it was my turn, and I was very excited. Um, but the best part about it is just this finding the balance, you know, between well, what it is. It's a life and death, and dis it's a really tricky thing playing because you are forced to sort out hmm. all of your issues right. in one episode, or I was, and um, Michael and Greg, who was directing, were so great and supportive and helped me track everything through, and Adam, hmm. um, and so I think we really kind of honed the, the storyline. But I think, to, you know, the trap with the ghost character is that you're going to be sort of generally confused. Mm -hmm. That was my worry, that my trap for myself. Was, right. But, um, so it was a real, there was a real challenge. Mm -hmm. and the, ghost, the ghost episode was a real challenge. A good, a, a welcome one. Mm -hmm. But, uh... And again, throwing that wrench into to the acting, really, like to, to here, try this. Yeah. It's very yeah, interesting. I mean, you know, there's nobody other than Michael, there's nobody to affect. Mm -hmm. So you really have to do a lot of work to um, create for yourself, you know, what what you're grappling with. Right. You know, your unfinished business or, or what have you. And she recovers so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> she has like she has like this crazy life-saving brain surgery and then works out. So <laughs> I didn't have to do that. That works out well. Too yeah. No, it was very glamorous. I had a very chic head back. <laughs> Does that affect her going forward? Or are we going to see some sort of repercussions? Or is it kind of um, a moment of clarity for the character more? You know, it's funny. Andrew Lee uh, toyed with some stuff, I think. The idea that it would linger more. Um, but the way that we've dealt with it is um, in the episode she kind of comes comes to the realization that she had uh, that she has this community here that loves her and that make it worth staying hmm. and so the episodes that follow um, she is reunited with Sydney, Stacy Barber's character. Right. And so, you know, the, the next episode, I think it's a few weeks later, so she's still she's recovering a bit, but she gets right back into it because, again, mm. she was on this journey of, you know, really making strides as a doctor and having more seniority and mm. uh, taking on the younger residents that had come and bossing them around a bit. So, you know, it doesn't hold her back, I would say. Right. And I think um, Sydney distracts her a little bit. Right. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.